And then we're going to come up into bridge. So when you're ready, inhale and exhale, pelvic tilt. On the next inhale, press into your Padabanda, both feet lifting up, rolling up into bridge. Don't go too far the first time. Just roll up nice and comfortably up to the shoulder area. And then release slowly on the exhale back down. So take three more of those on your own. So you're inhaling with the pelvic tilt. Remember, we're lifting up. We're opening out the front of the body. So deeper inside, we're opening up the psoas and the oxus muscles. So probably where you can really feel that is on the front of your hip flexors, the hip hinges we talk about. You probably feel that stretch there between the top of your quads and the bottom of your torso. You can probably feel as you roll up and open that little stretch going on that's stretching up through your body, right up through to that middle of the thoracic spine there where the psoas joins you. One more. And then release. And the next one, we're going to take either you can just roll up and down and take your hands up with you, or you can um, come up to the top and do some leg lifts. So it's up to you whether you want to just continue rolling up and down or take some leg lifts with me. So if you're coming with me, then push into the feet, roll up to the top. You can take your hands above your head with this anyway if you want to. I'm going to move your awareness into your left foot and press into that padabanda and gently just take the other foot off the floor about a centimetre and then lower it. So you can feel what's having to switch on just to lift that leg a centimetre off, the right leg. You're having to really work deep inside the front core muscles. So then, if you're comfortable doing that, and now you'll know whether you are, you've got to switch on the abdominal muscles to do this. We're going to lift the right thigh up, bringing the knee towards us, towards our head. So you're switching on the lower half of the psoas muscles here. You're bringing your knee to your body rather than, or your thigh to your body. Take two or three of those, just toe tapping on the right hand side, really. And it's the same big muscle that's bringing your leg to your torso as takes your torso to your leg. It works both ways, that's what it wants to do. Take one more on the right hand side and if you're doing the leg lifts, move into the left hand side. Those of you that are rolling up and down, just continue or maybe hold at the top and have a nice big stretch. Otherwise move into the padabanda on the right foot, for those that are leg lifting. Press into it for a little bit of extra rebound and energy. Switch on the tummy muscles. Feel that, what we think is just a little muscle in the hip hinge, it's not. It's going right up through to the middle of your spine. That contraction and opening. And then release the foot back to the floor. Everybody take a nice roll back down. Take the feet to the width of the mat, bring the arms down if they're above your head and take a few windscreen wipers, just very gently, and maybe warming up a little bit more to go a little bit further each time. Roll through the back of the body. But while you're doing this, you're also rolling through the front of the body. Notice that twist going across the abdominal muscles. And then we're going to sit up again. So press into your elbows, lift your head, use your chin, obviously, to lift your head. Come back up to the top. So hands behind us, we're bringing our feet in again. And we're coming into kind of a Navasana shape here. Boat pose shape. We're not going to do boat pose, but it's a similar shape we're in now. Everybody can do this one. So draw up through the front of your body. Think of lengthening through those big muscles in the front underneath. Your, um, your baby core muscles, the ones in the front of your body, think deep, lift up through, take the shoulders down away from the ears, and then lift the left, the right knee again towards your chest. So just toe tapping, 
two or three times on one side and then the other. Everybody can do this one. Make sure your tummies are switched on so that you've got a little bit of containment in your tummy muscles. After your third one on the left, take your right leg, stretch it out in front of you so your thighs are parallel now, pointing the toes away from you and then flexing the toes, pressing in as if you were, when you flex, you're opening up that pad of anda. So keep that thigh up by lifting up through the hip flexor through to your thoracic spine, your iliac psoas muscles. It will get tired, it will try to lower, so try and switch them back on to lift that leg back up. But it's not just now that we're moving at the hip hinge, we're thinking of using that long muscle that comes from the hip hinge upwards. Pop that foot down, take the other foot away, same thing, flex the foot, point the foot, keep trying to keep the thighs parallel. Trying to engage with that deep psoas muscle where it is. So as the leg tires and wants to drop at the hip hinge, switch on a little bit higher, but try to tuck your tummy up under your rib cage again. And then lower the foot to the floor. It's the time. Uh, we'll take one more option here. So these are, this is yoga, this is called yogic cycling. Give your wrists a little shake and then pop your hands back where they were. And then we're just gonna lift the legs one at a time. You can keep one on the floor if you want to at a time or you can lift both feet off and just cycle the legs out. So again, we feel it might tire in the hip hinge area. Try and switch on the whole of that muscle by lifting up through the torso, by drawing the tummy back and under. The thighs and the hip hinges think they're doing all the work. They probably are because you're not switching on the other part of the muscle. See if you can draw back under your ribs with your tummy and switch it on. And then release the feet to the floor. So that's a really good one for core muscles, but initially your legs will tire first because not many of us have got very strong core muscles. You have to really work on drawing these into movement. Okay, so bring your bricks in now. Um, and your um, cushion if you're going to use it. First of all, come down onto your back. We're gonna take windscreen wipers again. Maybe your feet a little closer this time. Hands out to the side. Just allow the legs to rock through. And when you feel comfortable enough to, Stop on one side and let your legs fall down towards the floor. So go into Jatari Pavriti modified here. So just let yourself fall into a twist one way. Let the hips sink down towards the floor. Let the legs soften. If you want to bring a brick in and stick it there for a couple of breaths, then please do if it's really uncomfortable. But feel that nice big stretch across the front of the abdominal area, right through to the ribs. So across the body stretch here. Feel that nice opening through the hip flexors, particularly the top leg, you might feel that extension through the end of the psoas muscle, which thinks it's been doing all the work, probably has. Bring the knees back up to center, take another few rolls from side to side and then twist to the other side and let the legs go. Use the brick if you need support. And that nice extension again through the top hip flexor. And maybe you can start to, in your mind's eye, run up from there up to that point of your spine under your ribs where that big muscle joins. So we haven't done anything with our six pack this morning. They do do their own job, but they're not by any means your strong core muscles. So doing sit-ups, we use the, um, what we call their six pack. Um, the, but, and that's why they're very easy to train and make them look good. Well, some people are, <laughs> um, but you never see all the work that these really deep core muscles do. But you do actually, because that's what your posture is all about. If you have a weak psoas muscle, then um, 
it, it, your posture won't be good. Also, if it's too strong and too tight, then it also will fold you forward all the time and you'll end up bent forward. So it's all about posture, keeping that nice strength in that muscle, but also the flexibility. Now bring your knees back up to centre and sit up slightly. Um, and you can either go into supported bridge here if you would rather. So roll up to bridge and stick up, um, the low brick under your pelvis, or you can come up into supported fish. So using your two bricks, one under that area, just at the back of your body under your bra. Use a, a cushion if you need to soften that feeling there. And then using the other brick to support your head. So if you come in, into bridge, you know that one, I think, probably to support yourself. If you come into modified fish, find that brick just at the bottom of your bra line. And then find the other brick for your head or a cushion for your head. If you want a bit more of a stretch, then pop your head to the floor. So I've got the one under my back on a really low setting here. It's not a huge big back bend, but what we're doing is opening out the front of our body here. So legs can be bent in this position. Tuck the chin just to support the head a little bit more. And legs can either be bent or if you want a bigger stretch, then take one leg at a time away from you and find that stretch through the front of the body. So now from the hip hinges, from the bottom of the psoas muscles, right up through to under your ribs and into your chest. So we're giving it a bit of a stretch off after it's worked hard. It's that thing about counter posing again. If you always work the muscle, to strengthen it, then you won't have the flexibility in it and it won't do its job properly. So we tend to associate what we're doing with the outside of our body more. We tend to think nearer the skin, but really it's what's deep inside us that matters. <clears throat> 